it says I'm live. Hello everyone, Van Danny Graham here in the kitchen again. I was getting ready for supper and I was making a recipe I've only made once before, one that I made up on the fly when I was checking out my fridge and saw what ingredients I had and thought, let me try this. And last time it turned out so good. I'm hoping this time it will turn out what good as well. So it's chili relleno. Chili relleno, I believe, is the right way to pronounce it. I don't know for sure on that. I don't speak Spanish, but um, I love it when I order it in the Mexican restaurants. And I love poblano peppers. So, hi, Susie. Hi, Galena. <laughs> Hello. Can't wait to see how you make it. Well, it's not authentic. So if you're counting on that, you can forget it because it's not authentic. It's how I make it with what I've got and I really enjoyed it. Hello from Colorado, from Patty, hello. Hello, Isabel. Hi, Allie, glad to have you here, everyone. So in my freezer, I had all kinds of peppers from my garden. I had, uh, I think I wrote a list, let's see. I had poblanos, I had jalapenos, Jimmy Nardello's, Burra, Anaheim, and bell peppers. We love this dish here. Oh, good, Patty. Well, you might see it a new way because I didn't look it up. I just kind of threw it together and we'll see how it comes out this time. Uh, anyway, I took out my peppers that I had in the freezer, let them thaw just enough to chop them up. And last time I took them whole and I blackened them first in my um, toaster oven and then peeled off the skins, the blackened skins, so they were kind of roasted. This time I took a pound of ground beef and an onion, chopped up onion, and I put it all in the fry pan and cooked them all down together. So I had the ground beef and the uh, all the peppers, all those different kinds of peppers. Hello, JD, hello. Let me see who I missed. Tammy. K, uh, Catherine, Marie, welcome everyone. So I'm going to let you see what I'm cooking here. Now this, this pot here, I've put in some olive oil. I put in a pound of ground beef and I put in two cups of all those different kind of peppers that I chopped up and one onion chopped up. So all that's in there. I love poblano peppers. I was so glad I still had some of those. So some of them are hot, some of them are sweet. Hi Sharon, Bama Grits. Retired and prepping. Angie, hello. Laura, hello Laura. Okay, so here's the mixture that's given us the meat and the peppers and the onions. Now this is not authentic, but I made red beans and rice last week. Well, actually a few days ago. And I decided, you know, I needed to use it up. So I'm gonna use this as one of the layers in the casserole. I don't think it can hurt. It ought to taste pretty good. And what I've also done is I wanted sausage and I didn't have like chorizo sausage or something that might be preferred. Hi, Christy. So all I had was my little cocktail sausages. And you know what I always say, if you don't have the thing you want, use the thing you got. So in go the cocktail sausages that I cut up. Again, not authentic at all, but I think it's gonna be kind of tasty. When this is what you got, this is what you use. So here I've got my meat and veggies in here. And of course the sausage is already cooked. It's just got to get warmed up with the casserole. So there's my meat and veggies. Now, over here, I've already put in my rice cooker, two cups of brown rice that I scrubbed and washed in a strainer, um, five cups of water, you could use broth. I didn't have any, so I used water. I put in one cup of chopped up bell peppers, all different colors, just to make it purdy. And then if I don't use all the rice, at least I'll have some nice flavored rice left over with peppers in it. And I put in one can 
of fire roasted tomatoes. I found at the dollar store they had fire roasted tomatoes, Hunt's fire roasted tomatoes, two cans for a dollar. I couldn't pass that up. So I put one of those in there. Sorry, I'm bouncing you around here. All right, who all is here that I missed? Dolores, Delora, Delora, hello. And Freaky Geek, missed you by five minutes. I tried to warn you. <laughs> so, alrighty, so this is what I'm gonna do. This is gonna be like the quickest recipe you ever saw because I already got some of it done with browning up the meat and getting the rice done. The rice is ready to go. Hello, Barb. Thanks for coming. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I got my bowl here and I'm going to be making the casserole in this bowl but I'm also going to put in some egg and milk mixture because you know when you make chili relleno re, 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 there I go again I can't say it chili relleno relleno you um dip it in egg and bread it and cook it so I'm gonna mix up a couple of eggs and add where to go and about a half a cup I'm gonna put condensed milk in so I'm gonna put in about half a cup two eggs I'll put in a cup there condensed milk and eggs Just beat that up till the eggs are mixed. Okay, so here's my bowl. Gonna put oil in it. Grease my bowl with some olive oil. Whatever kind of oil you like to use. Then I'm going to layer it. Let me see if I can darken that for you. All right, now I want to layer it. So I think I'm going to put a little bit of the sauce on the bottom. So that would be my red beans and rice sauce. I'll put a layer, a layer of my rice with bell peppers and fire roasted tomatoes. And there's salt and pepper in there too. Of course, the red beans of rice is pretty highly spiced, so that'll bring out the flavor. And throw in some of our meat and peppers. I love the smell of these peppers. An onion that's all in here okay and then I'm gonna put on a little bit of the egg mixture to bake in there bake into the casserole and we'll do it all over again my red beans, highly spiced red beans. I don't remember which order I did. I think the rice was next. Not that it matters. When you cut into it, you're going to just bring it all up mixed anyway when you scoop it out. Fire roasted tomatoes, tricolored peppers. These are all the sweet ones in here in the rice. Salt and pepper. meat in. I'll probably do three layers here. A little more of the egg mixture. More of the red beans. 
good way to use them up, huh? Give them a totally different flavor. We got meat in them now. Before it's just red beans and rice. Now it's got meat and all those strong pepper flavors, roasted type peppers. Yeah, I'm going to use all the rice. <clears throat> I'll have plenty of this left over to freeze and have for other meals. So this is just an idea of what you can do with your leftovers and your what you got in your fridge when you can't quite think of what to make and you might have these ingredients on hand. I didn't have the right kind of peppers and everything for an authentic recipe, but budget a little bit. Play with it. I think you can come up with something delicious. And I think I'll... Well, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put all the cheese in, so I'm going to have to forget my layers and just mix the cheese in. Again, I didn't have all the right kind of cheese, or enough of it, so I'm going to have to mix American cheese in with it. But I guess I could just put it on top, and then we'll just cut it through when we, when we scoop it out. I'll put a lot on top. It would be better if you put it in the, in the body of the layers. So that was Mexican cheese, Mexican-style cheese. This, I got a little bit of pepper jack, so I'll just cut that up on it. You probably want four to eight ounces of cheese. For a big bowl if you're going to save some okay and i think i will kind of put that down inside mix it in a little pretend that i layered it oh this pepper smells so good Poblano and Anaheim and Jalapeno, bell peppers, lots and lots of them. All right, and just because you can never have too much cheese, this is definitely not authentic, but this is what I've got. I'll just put some American on top. Of course, you can use the cheese you have. I'm going to put that in the oven. Most of it's already cooked, so it probably only has to heat up for 20 minutes or so. Um, you know what else I could put on it? Some breadcrumbs. These are Planko breadcrumbs. Use whatever kind you like. There we go. Chili relleno casserole made from what you got on hand and we'll stick it in the oven now I'll check it in about 20 minutes okay that was fast huh <laughs> all right let's see yeah, deconstructed is right. Yeah, I did. I, You know, we raised seven kids. I don't know how to cook small. <laughs> so I end up freezing stuff. And then when the kids come over, we have 
we have uh, leftovers in the freezer to thaw out. And my husband can take some to work. All right, let me get back to where we were. Okay, with comments. Okay, Freaky Geek said that first warning helped to get get him here. Out of Goshen. Wait, are we making Rianos? I love Rianos. It's a deconstructed Riano and definitely not authentic. <laughs> Bandana Grandma's version of clean out the fridge Rianos. Okay. Making sure there's no questions or comments I need to address. Talking among yourselves, that's great. Go ahead and subscribe to each other's channels. That's always a good thing. I will say grace. God bless the potatoes. God bless the meat. Come on, everybody. Let's all eat. I think that's what my dad used to say. <laughs> that looks scrumptious. Thank you. It does. It smells good. And it's going to smell even better as it starts cooking. I want to smell a vision. <laughs> yeah, I think I made enough for all of you, too. Alrighty. Looks like a casserole. That's what it is. It's a casserole. Chili Rayano casserole. Thank you, Allie, for helping out. You've not seen me throw anything yet. I don't know what that means. Go for green. Hi, Daniel. White picket Fence. That's the best way to make something. Saves money by using what you have and it's still yummy. That's right. You know, I could have gone out and bought chorizo sausage. I could have gone out and bought more kinds of the right kind of cheese. I could have done this. I could have done that. No, thank you. I made a live stream. Yay. I believe in. Hello, hon. Glad you're here. <laughs> she made a live stream. Oh, sure. Casserole's in the title. Silly me. Yes, it is. I tried to warn you. You should rename it to Northern Rellenos. You girl. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. Definitely not Mexican authentic. I wouldn't claim it is at all. And Patty made shepherd's pie for her dinner tonight. That's good. Do you make yours with hamburger or lamb or what, Patty? Taste the vision would be great. Yum. What do you serve it with? Um, I think I'm going to make a salad. Uh, I have greens and uh, different uh, veggies in there I can make a salad with. I could serve it with chips, but we're trying not to eat that stuff. This is going to be bad enough with all that cheese in it. So I think we'll eat pretty plain tonight without a lot of accoutrements. It does smell good in here. So what else can I show you? All right, I'll show you what I'm working on. The next thing I'm going to start again. Looks really good. What time is supper? When my honey gets home. He'll probably be home around 4. He eats early because he's a teacher. And when he goes to school, he has lunch like at 1130. So by the time he gets home, 4 o'clock or so, he's pretty hungry. Yep. Spoon it out on a dish. There's enough in it. I don't need to serve a lot of other things with it. All right, let me show you what I'm working on here. If you followed my channel for long, you may have seen these before, but I need to get busy and start making my slippers again. I've got one done. Is there, these are crocheted. And they're crocheted with that extra bulky yarn. And I put a cuff on them. Sometimes I make a scalloped edge on the cuff, or if I make a solid color, I might put two different colors on it. And I started the second one, and I got the toe done, <laughs> and I need to get busy. So this has been done for months and months, so I need to pick them up and get them going again, because I think my uh, mittens are slowing down some. I've got a lot of stuff to make with them, and I am going to keep making them, because I'm going to have a table at the... Um, I'm going to have a table at the Homesteaders of America conference in October, and I'll be selling all my wares there, so I need to stock up and have inventory to do that. Thank you. I like those slippers, too. They're, this, this yarn is so cushy, and so these are really comfortable to walk in. <laughs> well, 
I could use two pairs of those slippers, but when I get them going again, I'll put them up and how much I charge them. And if you want to order some, you can do that. Whoever gets that one slipper will have toasty toes and a chilled heel. Yes, they will. Only has the toes done. Sell the slippers to us. I will. I will when I get them going again. I still got to finish up some mittens and then get my slippers going and my ponchos going. And I'm going to be making aprons. So let's back to my, my mittens again. I'll show you what I've got. I've got some that are ready to sell, and if they don't sell, they're just going to go in inventory, and I'm going to bring them to the Homesteaders Conference next October. So, all right, these, this pair, again, these are made from recycled sweaters, and this is called Smoke and Ice. There's gray and a ribbed gray cuff and an ice blue um, button that is vintage. So this pair is called Smoke and Ice. If you want to see, that's how they fit. There's plenty of stretch, so some of these will fit men and women because there's good stretch in them. And this pair is called Partridge. It's got like a heather brown on the back and beige, a beigey uh, marbled button and the stripe with the green and the beige and the navy and the maroon. All felted sweaters. Triple stitched on uh, stress points, double stitched and zigzagged on the other seams and then hand stitched around the cuffs. And this pair is made from alpaca. This is the backs and the cuffs are 100% alpaca. And look at those bronzy orangey buttons. It just sets it up beautifully. I love that. This side has the gray stripe wool and the maroon wool. And I can't remember what I call these. But just say orange buttons, and I'll know which ones you mean. So all these, they sell, nope, there goes my phone. I'm going to let it ring. These sell for $35 a pair shipped in the U.S. All right, and this pair this pair is called Majestic. It has metal buttons with crowns on them. It has fleur-de-lis on the gray backs. It has cable knit royal red on the fronts with a beigey brown there. And again, the, the gray coming around with the ribbed cuffs coming around like that. So those are called majestic. And I got two more pair for sale yet. And I'll be making more. All right, these are called Crimson Snowfall. And they're a blue heather here with the seed stitch through them. Looks kind of like snowflakes. And it's got a blue button and the maroon palm on the top and the, and the same uh, snowfall on the bottom of the palm and then the maroon cuff there. So those are called Scarlet Snowfall. And the last pair, I named these Wine and Diamonds, because there's a silver diamond shaped button and wine colored heavy felted wool on the top and bottom. These are a little snugger than the others, so if you have a smaller hand, these would be good. So, and those are wine and diamonds. <laughs> That's what I need that pair. I'll put them back together in a minute. So those are the mittens I have made for sale right now. Um, what is the purpose of the button? There's no purpose. It's just decorative. Uh, the button is purely decorative.
and it can come off if you'd rather have it off. All right, put, let me see, where are we here? I want pink slippers, says Allie. Okay, I need a pair size 11 in pink. Put slipper stuff on the, oh, I know what you're saying, yeah. There's a spray you can get to put on the bottom of the slippers so they don't slip on the floors, right? You can get that. Love you, Mitten, says Barb. Thank you, Barb. Uh, where did you get the pattern for the slippers? It's a combination of patterns. I had seen some on the internet, and they didn't make up right for me. I didn't like how they had measured them out. I didn't like that they didn't show where to start and stop the stitching. So I've got my own pattern. I kind of blended several together. And uh, I think eventually I'm going to post it so if anybody wants to use it, they can. I just need to uh, find a way to scan it into my uh, computer. Uh, Partridge is beautiful. Thank you, Patty. I've got more of that, that stripe too so I can make other mittens. Thank you. Yes, I made the slippers. Uh, the slipper pat, if you're asking about a slipper pattern, that too, my sister and I kind of worked it out. Uh, there was a slipper pattern that was similar, but it used a different kind of yarn. And we wanted to use this really bulky yarn because it's so cushy. And you couldn't use the same count if you're using the big bulky yarn. So Jody helped me figure out how to uh, remake the pattern and then I put my own cuff on it and Jody puts a different kind of cuff on hers. My sister Jody also makes these. Okay. I told you the button was just decorative. I show, sew on shower strips on mine. Shower strips. Hmm. You mean the kind you put in a tub? Freaky likes to help even when he's fooling around. <laughs> cool. I'll change mine too. I do hope you'll be able to publish the slipper pattern. Mm -hmm. No, the sticky ones like little fish. I sew them on the bottom. Okay, the sticky ones that you put in a shower. I'm not quite sure what you're talking about. I do know my sister has showed me that she uses a spray that she can put on the bottom and it works to uh, keep them from slipping. Hello, Amy. Glad to have you here. You missed my chili rain. I already got it in the oven. So, all right, I'm not going to stay. This is just going to be a quick one. I wanted to show you putting a chili in the oven. The chili rellano. Uh, I could get it out and try it, but I think it's going to take too long, and I don't want to have you all hang around. Yeah, I'll rewatch later. Okay, Amy. <laughs> so thanks for coming by. I hope you you all caught it. If not, rewatch it, and you can see that. And I will talk to you all later. Click the uh, subscribe button or the like button, please. The thumbs up if you like my videos. And I might see you tomorrow with another cooking video. Bye-bye, y'all.